again and welcome to Spotlight. Today we're going to be talking to some of the candidates for the Ludlow Select Board and we'll be interested in finding out what their opinion is on certain uh, issues in Ludlow. And first of all, let's introduce who the candidates are. Justin? Hi there. Uh, yes, my name is Justin Hijek. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Ludlow, Vermont. I graduated Black River. I own a couple businesses in the town of Ludlow, village really, and uh, we just bought our first home here. So excited to be running. Jay. Uh, yes, I'm Jay Jerkois. That's pronounced like turquoise with the J. It's my <laughs> goal to get everyone to pronounce my name pro properly. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I've been living in Ludlow for only 30 years. Um, I'm an electrical contractor, been doing that for four, nearly 40 years. Um, used to serve on the select board with Bruce uh, about 15 years ago. And uh, just a resident now, well, citizen. Good. Bruce? Uh, Bruce Schmidt, uh, fourth generation Vermonter, grew up in uh, Ludlow, graduated from Black River. Uh, I've been on the select board uh, since 2002. Um, been the chairman for the last two years after the passing of Howard Barton. Um, and, uh, you know, both my kids graduated from Black River, uh, and uh, my wife and I live on Chapman Road. Okay. I would like to mention to our viewers that two of the uh, uh, other people running for contested select board seats uh, were unable to make it due to the work requirements. Uh, they're Scott Bates and uh, Chris Garvey. Okay, now let's begin with some questions. And we'll be, Justin, we'll start with you. Um, with the closing of the Black River High School, the, the school building purchased by the town and the formal closing of the Ludlow Municipal Bus System, how do you believe the select board should act so that the building does not become a burden on the taxpayer? Justin? Uh, we are in the early stages. Um, this is new uncharted territory uh, for us as a town. I believe some other towns have dealt with such closures and building um, maintenance issues. Uh, what we like to do is we want to say, okay, do we want to control the building for the first couple years and then decide if we want to sell it? Or do we want the school board to remain control of the building and then sell it at the end of this year? Um, we came together as a town and as a board, decided um, that the town would like to have that building. Um, it's a historical building in our town. Um, so as of right now, I think the goal is to obviously transfer the ownership and then hopefully we can get a, a tenant in there as a landlord. Um, the town doesn't really want to be a landlord, but you know, um, the town decided that we wanted to purchase that building for the one dollar. Um, hopefully we can get a tenant in there and we'll see where it goes from here. Okay, Jay? Well, first of all, it, 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 say it breaks my heart to see that our school is closed uh, after, you know, how many years of Black River High. Um, with that said, you have a building that any building is going to require funds to maintain um, and like Justin mentioned, it would nice to have a, have to get a tenant in there um, to pay for whatever the upkeep is. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to rush into anything as far as a decision goes. So <clears throat> I think possibly to mothball it for a time till you come up with you know something that's going to be feasible for the long term. I think that'd probably be the best way to go. Oh, okay. Scott, uh, Bruce, and. Uh, you know, I echo what, uh, what you know, Justin and Jay said, uh, and you know, it, it is unfortunate that uh, you know the school uh, closed, and uh, you know, I think the taxpayers, uh, you know, sent a message of what they wanted us to do. Now we do have a building, and um, we have been working uh, with uh, the town manager, looking at different options. There's potential that uh, maybe the Black River Independent School uh, may be able to work something out. Um, I also spoke to uh, Logan Nicole and, uh, and Scott Murphy as the state of Vermont just uh, earmarked $700,000 to move some of the state office buildings from Springfield because they're uh, expanding uh, to the Windsor Prison Farm. 
So I said we should reach out and make them aware that we have space that's perhaps closer to uh, you know population centers that they're looking for. But I think we have to keep looking for those different uh, options. And then you know potentially um, you know I really feel that we have a, a, a housing issue, affordable housing issue in this town, and uh, that may be something we can do there too. Okay. Now as a follow up. Uh, do you support the use of the bus system uh, to support the needs of the Ludlow Mount Holly School District? Jay, why don't we start with you? Well, the bus system, I, I remember when we first had the issue with Act 60 coming into, into play, uh, we, we, had a hard, we had a hard time as far as um, cutting our school costs. And one of the things that we cut from the school budget was the bus system. Uh, the argument back then was that um, transportation was not education. And we got a lot of pushback from the state on that. Uh, yet we were able to prevail and take the, take the bus, um, the busing line item out of the school budget and put it into the town budget. And if you notice that our, our school buses aren't really school buses, even though they're the same chassis and frame and maybe the color, but it actually says Ludlow Municipal Transit on it. That saved the town quite a bit of money. Um, now, um, there's a little bit of a different twist to it. I think um, Mount Holly, uh, Ludlow School, uh, what do you want to call it, um, board now that, that's been Unified formed. School Board, yeah. Um, you know, they have, the, they have the opportunity to lease these buses for a dollar a year, and that was voted down, which I don't quite understand. I think it's kind of a... Um, going along the same lines as, as trying to keep that school budget low so that our, our taxes um, stay relatively uh, in check in that, in that area. Okay, Bruce? Um, I would say, you know, I think uh, Jay is somewhat humble uh, in the sense it was actually Jay that brought the idea up. I thought it was a great idea when that was, uh, we were struggling and uh, I was on the board then and uh, you know, it, it was a great idea, and, and we went through some tough times uh, getting the state to, uh, you know, threaten to come down and shut down our system, but we prevailed. So I'd give Jay a lot of credit for that. I am not in support of um, the uh, municipal transit system uh, being in place for the school, and my reason is, is if we do it that way, then uh, the taxpayers in the town of Ludlow uh, would be footing the burden for uh, that uh, transit system. Um, as it is now, the unified school, um, the cost to uh, operate uh, Mount Holly and uh, Black River, Mount Holly, and uh, uh, Ludlow Elementary are borne by both uh, towns. Taking out a transit system and having it be part of for Ludlow would mean that Mount Holly would not have to transport the kids in Ludlow or pay for it, but we would have to pay to transport the kids in Mount Holly. So I'm not in support of keeping the municipal bus system uh, for that reason. I, I think it's, uh, we need to be making sure that uh, we're equally, um, the costs are being spread across uh, the towns equally. Okay, Justin. Um, yeah, so transportation is always gonna be an issue in rural towns, um, especially with unified school districts. We, as a select board, um, were approached by members of the school boards, um, and we worked with them to try to secure them uh, buses that they could lease and put in their budget, which was then voted down, and they decided they were going to um, do other, pursue other, other avenues. Um, so we wished them well with that, and in my opinion, we did uh, everything we could to um, make everything work during these troubled and changing times. As, as I recall, uh, you two may couldn't correct me, but uh, Ludlow intends to sell those buses now, doesn't it, at market value? Yeah. Uh, yes, it does. Um, originally, that was uh, not what the, that deal was. And uh, according to the budget, uh, the, uh, the transportation system simply disappearing uh, next year. Correct. Yeah, it won't be a line item. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if uh, the Black River Independent School Committee uh, is awarded the necessary approvals by the state, uh, what steps should the select board take to support that operation? And conversely, what steps should it take not to support it? Bruce? Well, I think we should try to support uh, the school uh, as we can, the independent school. 
um, within reason. Uh, it is uh, an entity that would be good for uh, you know the students, and we need to, or the town, and we should try to get it up and off the ground. But uh, we can't be subsidizing uh, you know the school. It'll be a private school. Uh, we will probably have some kids that will go, but won't, it will not be all the kids that will be in the town of Ludlow. So I think we have to um, have a plan to uh, work with them for the first few years, but making sure that we're getting market value uh, as, it, as it moves along. Okay. Justin? Yeah, so um, I believe the base of community is centered around you know, the children and the future of the town um, and the you know, healthiness of that student body uh, is important to any town. So by having the state close down our school, we had to really try to figure out, okay, well, how do, how do we preserve this community of Ludlow, our citizens? Um, and a lot of great people stepped up and formed uh, Black River Independent School Committee. They've been doing their due diligence and working very hard towards that end goal of getting that independent school. Um, I believe as a citizen and as a member of the select board currently, uh, we should really, I should, I do this and I think everybody should look at how best to let them succeed, but not like reiterating what Bruce said, not, you know, spend, we don't want to increase the tax burden on anybody, uh, but we do want to support them the best way that we can uh, moving forward. I would, I would agree with that. Okay. <clears throat> Jay? <clears throat> well, I think this is like the million dollar question. I mean, you're looking at um, a town that has lost its school, and it's lost its school for an, uh, uh, a few reasons, but probably the main reason is the lack of students. And why is that? Why, why are we missing, why don't we have enough students to have enough, have enough classes and have enough classes for a school? And basically, you're, you come down to the cost of housing, what it costs to live here, and those go back to the impact from um, what we are as a town, basically a resort town. Um, you go down Pleasant Street and there's, there's nobody that lives there anymore and hasn't for some time. It's basically been sold to second homes. So I think to really look at this problem, you have to have a vision for the future. Where are we gonna be five years, 10 years, 15 years down the road? Um, are we gonna become anything different than a resort town? And I, I don't see an answer to that. Okay. Now, the new budget that's been, been proposed uh, is going to provide $66,000 to support the ambulance service, which historically has been treated uh, as a proprietary unit uh, or standalone uh, unit within Ludlow. Uh, part of the reason for this new funding request is due to the lack of volunteers who are entering the service. What steps do you feel the select board should take to address the decreasing uh, volunteerism? It's affecting not just the ambulance, but I believe it's also affecting the fire department. So, Justin? So, like Jay said, one of the biggest issues that we have um, is lack of affordable housing. Bruce said that first, and um, Jay just said that. And I couldn't agree more. I think um, lack of housing is a very big issue. Um, but I think by encouraging growth and restructuring um, of the fire department and the ambulance services, if we can build a robust culture, people will actually flock to it because they want to be a part of that culture. Um, as a small business owner in this town, um, I'm learning how to navigate the waters of hiring people as well. 90% of people that come in for a job interview at my establishment do not live in Ludlow. They live 45 minutes away. Um, and that can pose challenges as a business owner and as an employee that works for a business 45 minutes away in either direction. So it all circles back to how do we invest in this community based upon housing. Um, yes, we need a school, so we're not gonna get anybody without a school. A lot of people are just gonna move here. Um, so this is all kind of it all encompasses on these main central issues, um, but by developing a robust uh, culture at the ambulance service and at the firehouse, we can hopefully attract candidates that want to become a part of that. Um, so I think uh, they're doing a great job over there. Okay, okay. 
Well, Justin, you're, I think you're right on it. Um, the, the dynamics of the town has changed dramatically. Um, we, we are basically a service-oriented community. So th those are the jobs that are available. Um, you have no school, so you're not going to have um, your families moving into the area or people starting families. Um, this is the first thing that young, young couples look for is a viable, good school system. So without that, I mean, you're going to have seasonal help that might come in for the season to work um, and then gone. So what does that say about our volunteer fire department, um, first aid, uh, ambulance service? Um, you're not going to have those volunteers. We already see it in the work fields, um, in the construction fields, of trying to find um, good help, that or just someone you can train, and the, and the 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 people just aren't out there. Um, when I was entering the trades 40 years ago, there was a competition, there was a fight to get the jobs. Now we, it's hard to find anybody, um, even totally green, to to bring in. So what do you do with? The, the ambulance department, you, you have to hire people and you got to pay them. They're not going to work for free. So that's that you're going to see those budgets rise. Your ambulance budget, your fire department is going to have a budget for employees. It's going to be full time people, full time and part time. Okay. Bruce? Well, I take a little different approach. Um, I think we need to look at regionalization. Uh, I think that uh, there's been some discussion uh, with uh, you know those communities. And I think we have to uh, probably get into it more. Uh, you know, Mount Holly has an ambulance, and Chester has an ambulance, and Ludlow has an ambulance, and Springfield. So how do we combine, similar to the Rutland Regional? Uh, yeah, there's some upfront costs, uh, but you're helping uh, the entire uh, region. Uh, you know, the challenge that uh, Ludlow has with our ambulance um, is uh, the calls that we also serve Plymouth, we serve Cavendish, we serve Ludlow, there is payment for those, uh, but it's still, uh, it's not enough to, for us to have full-time, uh, you know, full-time people. Um, we're also, uh, you know, looking at what, what is our rates. Uh, we found in doing a study uh, commissioned by the select board that our rates probably had not, uh, um, followed what the rate of inflation or what is normal uh, uh, rates for ambulance service. So, um, you know, we're looking at that. And I also, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to be uh, such a uh, such a negative when it comes to the school, because when we had these discussions about the school closing, there were a lot of people that attended these meetings that talked about um, school choice being an option, a reason why people wanted to move into a town. So we're still going to have an elementary school uh, for those younger grades. Um, and, you know, I am hopeful that we're going to see some of that where now you can go to the school of your choice from uh, seventh grade on, uh, you know, and the town of Ludlow pays for that. You know, sort of as a follow-up to this, uh, there has been some talk recently uh, about uh, re-energizing the issue to merge the, the village and the town of Ludlow. Just uh, what are your own feelings about that? I believe this is a subject that's been brought up several times before and uh, defeated. Uh, we don't have a robust population, and there are a lot of cross sectors uh, that the village controls that the town might, you know, be better equipped to handle, or vice versa. I'm, as long as I've ever lived here, my you know my whole life, it's been town and village very separate. Um, I am more than uh, interested in learning if we can combine them, how that would work, um, what that entails, because it's been a system that's been in place for so long. Um, you know, we have to know all the facts before we start really considering um, dissolution of one or the other. So um, until we know more, I'm, I'm all ears for it. Uh, I just need to know a little bit more about it. Okay, Jane? Um, yeah, it's, I think that the village should be part of the town at this point. You think there should be a merger? Yes. Okay, Bruce? Um, I've kind of jokingly said when the trustees come to us with an idea that they want to merge, we should talk about it. But uh, I don't believe that the town should 
uh, pursue that. Uh, I personally believe that it should be merged. Um, I think there's feelings that uh, that some people have that they don't want to have the sewer to water department and electric light and uh, you know because all those are village entities uh, you know but you know at, at the end of the day having the budget for the town of Ludlow uh, support um, along with the trustees we could have much better sidewalks in this town we could have better services um, I really feel that uh, it would be a win-win uh, but when the village trustees are ready to support that and come to it I'd be willing to listen to it then. Okay. Now, town meeting is going to be considering a uh, citizen's petition to require that all future, quote, public questions, unquote, uh, be decided by Australian ballot. Given the impact that this would have on the future of town meeting, do you agree with the intent of this article, Jay? So what you're what you're saying is that, that or what the what the vote is for is to basically eliminate the town meeting before the election on Tuesday. Well, I don't believe it's to eliminate. I think simply that all town those meeting would, nothing would be voted on at town meeting uh, information. Uh, it would all be Australian ballot. Okay. So what would be the purpose of town meeting? on Monday night. That's, that's part of the question I'm asking. I mean, they do bring brownies and have some snacks there, but that might not, be, might not draw too many people. Um, <clears throat> years ago, it used to be somewhat lively at town meeting, um, not so much in, in recent days, recent years. Um, it's, it's, it's probably inevitable it's going to happen at some point. Um, all the articles that are voted on at town meeting basically are unanimous. Um, Sometimes the numbers are moved around a little bit, which you know you like to see that activity. You like to see the involvement. Um, I wish it could be reserved. I don't know if it will be, um, but at the same time, if it does does happen, you're going to have a very long ballot on Tuesday. <laughs> Bruce, uh, I am uh, absolutely against doing Australian ballot. Uh, you know, I will be supporting um, keeping it the way it is. Um, you know, I think it's safe to say uh, that a mistake was made uh, somewhere along the line um, when it came to uh, some votes being voted on uh, by Australian ballot since 1989. Uh, that was the last time that there was a vote on this, and somewheres uh, it fell through the cracks uh, since that time. And some votes have been done, whether it be tax abatement, whether it be zoning changes, um, but, you know, the, basically, uh, because the town of Ludlow does not have a charter, then the, tax pay, the, the citizens of the town decide how the voting is going to be done, and they voted to have it be um, town-wide votes from the floor. Um, somewhere along the line, that got, uh, you know, did not get followed. Very unfortunate, um, you know, and, and, you know, I would apologize as being a select board member at this point for that happening. But moving forward, I feel that we should continue with uh, and, and vote this article down. And we should also, as a select board, um, the members of the select board should look at potentially looking at a charter for the town of Ludlow. And then the select board can decide um, with input from the taxpayer, from the citizens, on how those votes uh, should be done. Okay, Justin. Um, yeah, I, I think um, it, it shouldn't be one or the other. I think uh, we've been doing it a certain way for a while. Some votes are on the floor, some votes are by ballot. I think uh, that seems to be the best system because what I don't want is I don't want and I don't want a public town vote on something and then one bully pulpit to kind of bully around decisions. Um, I think people will maybe vote their conscience a little bit more if they're privately voting. So I'd like to see kind of both options stay on the table for issues. That's an interesting point. Uh, I'm not aware of the legal ramifications of that or state regulations, but uh, is it possible that you, you could have both options? Isn't that say, what, say to the, to the, with the select board may, being the determinant? With the charter. Yeah, with the with charter. With the charter, you can. A charter would allow you to do that. Yes, it would. 
Yeah. That seemed to be the most sensible thing, but. I don't know the exact, uh, mm. my understanding is there's some positives and negatives with a charter. Uh, I don't know, but I think that uh, the select board that you know begins after town meeting should look into that. Okay. Well, with a charter, doesn't that mean that uh, any time you make a change, it has to go, it has to be approved by the state legislature? You have to get legislative approval for a charter. I don't believe it has anything to do with other changes. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that. We're going to have to research that. Okay, fair enough. Now, the select board has been considering a 1% sales tax, which in effect gives you uh, seven tenths of a percent uh, to collect. Uh, while it's not been included in this budget, it has decided to continue consideration of it. What's your uh, opinion of the implementation of a 1% local sales tax, Bruce? Uh, I'm in favor of it. <clears throat> I believe it would be uh, a way to uh, reduce the tax burden on the, uh, the taxpayers of the town of Ludlow. Um, I do believe that the select board will need to give some um, transparency on how that money is going to be spent. And I think that was a challenge, and um, I was uh, one of those who was uh, pushing to not put that on the ballot uh, for town meeting because I didn't think we uh, had enough information to do it correctly. Um, but I am in favor of it. I think it is the right thing to do, um, and I would love to find a way to use some of that money for, to, to help with sidewalks, help with paving, um, you know, to help with uh, things that um, we, there may be some one-time, uh, you know, costs that we, that we have, but I am not in favor of just putting it all back into the general fund. I think that there should be, we initially had said maybe half goes to uh, tax abatement and then the other half goes to, uh, you know, these types of projects. Okay. Justin? Um, so, I'm on the fence about the local options tax. Um, I believe that this town has already already has its fair share of taxes. Um, I think that adding an additional tax that the state of Vermont then takes one third of right off the top is uh, rub, rubs me personally a little the wrong way. Um, you know, we already pay a, a bunch of taxes to the state and they're closing down our school. So I know they're two separate issues, but I'm just, I'm really, um, I'll, I'll see what the voters want, and but personally, um, I'm not really in favor of the local options tax. Okay, Jay. Uh, well, from what I recall, when the state first allowed the towns to impose a one cent ta or one percent tax, I think it was just the opposite. I think it was the the state would get two thirds and the town would get one third, or it might have been fifty fifty. I don't quite remember. I may be wrong, but you would have really liked that one. Um, <laughs> now, like that it's, to one. now that it's two thirds to the town and, and one third to the state, it's something that you know, let's look at it again. Um, I do think the townspeople should vote on it at, at possibly um, the general election in November. Um, but if we were to implement it again, once you once you add any kind of tax, I mean, you have a way of spending it, and that's I, I'm, I'm opposed to that. I think if we do implement it, it should be those money should be earmark specifics for certain specifics and that should be stated so that the townspeople know exactly what that money's going for and if it changes it's 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 um it's determined ahead of time before those and it could be something done on a yearly basis i believe okay. one of the things that i find very peculiar about that tax is the state is, <clears throat> is taking uh, three tenths of a percent of the um, from the one percent so the town effectively gets 0.7 percent However, the town, the state then charges you a fee for handling this. Uh, I find that a little odd, but uh, that, that goes above and beyond what we're talking about here, gentlemen. So. <laughs> I would say one thing, it is important to keep in mind that, that uh, most of that 30% uh, goes into the pilot fund, the payment in lieu of taxes. So there are some properties um, with state forest, uh, you know, here in the town of Ludlow, that uh, the town of Ludlow would get some money back, um, you know, for that, because uh, that's what that 30% does. Um, now, we're not going to get the full face value of what the property would be, but uh, we would get some. 
Okay. <clears throat> I'd like to close this now by just asking you, uh, what do you feel is the most important immediate problem facing the select board that, that should be addressed? And why don't we begin with you, Justin? Um, there is kind of a conflagration of certain issues that are really resonate with me on a personal level and in the town as well. One of the main ones um, that I've noticed is lack of housing. Uh, we have a dwindling population, um, the school closure, um, you know, it, there, there's a whole lot of issues going on there. Um, I think trying to redevelop a community uh, that has young people in it, that has a lot of new businesses, uh, reinvigorating Main Street, trying to bring a sense of community back into uh, Ludlow when we're getting kind of chipped away at all these little parts is really, really important to me. And something as small as a winter carnival or a festival where we can celebrate as a community together um, is, it, it would mean so much. And it's not, you know, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing any above and beyond things. We're just trying to bring back our sense of community. Um, and honestly, the main issues are uh, education for us and our high schoolers as well. Um, and then housing and building a sense of community, trying to get that back. Okay, Jay. Um, I'll have to agree with Justin on those two points. And, um, you know, how do, we, how do we get there? You know, how do we, how do we address uh, housing? How do we address um, bringing people to the community? How do we address educating our children? Um, that's, I think that's uh, part, a lot of that is, is, is um, the town plan which is something that's drawn up by the, by the Planning Commission. And it gives um, a guideline as to how the town's gonna progress over the next five years. I think they redo the town plan every five years. Um, one of the tools that the state, the Enabling Act, allows us to do or use, um, but I don't think we really take it too seriously. I don't see too many people attending Planning Commission meetings um, to work on the town plan. It's more of more they go through the motions. Um, but that's something that uh, we should be doing, looking at our future um, and have some vision of where we're going to be in five years and, and ten years and, and work towards those goals. Okay, thank you. Bruce? Um, affordable housing is, uh, you know, probably the biggest issue and, uh, you know, as we try to educate, uh, you know, the children, I think having affordable housing will obviously bring families in, um, taking care of our seniors, uh, you know, as, as they all get older. Uh, you know, is important. But I also feel that we need to make sure we stay on top of, um, you know, the, the town infrastructure. Uh, parking uh, in the town is an issue that, uh, you know, we need to uh, make sure that we're continuing to address. Um, I go back and, you know, keep saying about the sidewalks because I am embarrassed in some of the sidewalks that we have and how do we help that as a town? How do we you know, help with the, with the uh, trustees and, and the village and, and work on that. You know, keeping our cemetery looking great. Um, you know, our rec department, uh, you know, potentially we're going to have a dog park, which would be a good amenity for people. Um, you know, those are the things that, as a select board member, um, you know, people don't attend our meetings. Uh, and sometimes it's because they think, hey, things are going okay. Um, I also think that people watch enough of us and, and uh, there's enough, uh, you know, I get enough comments on things that are said. Uh, so I do think that people are interested in, in what's going on, but um, we have to stay on top of it. Uh, we got to, uh, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, we're doing everything we can for the taxpayers of this town. Okay, well, thank you. I just want to remind our viewers that uh, on March 2nd, Monday, uh, will be the the uh, town uh, town meeting information meeting, where a number of these issues will be decided, including the budget and the issue on the citizen petition on um, uh, the voting, and on March third will be the general election of officers, which the gentlemen are competing for, and that'll be a town hall from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I do urge you all to participate. It's an important election. And I want to thank these gentlemen for appearing on this show. And Thanks, Ralph. Thank yeah. you, Ralph. Thanks. That'll be a wrap for now.